Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to give you some unsolicited career advice. Learn to code. Okay. And <laughs> Well, the thing is, is I'm not telling you this. I'm not telling you this uh, to berate you. If you're recently laid off from your uh, journalism job or, or job. Uh, your comic book job or animation or whatever other creative endeavor you're doing, I'm actually not being facetious at all you see i've actually taken uh i've taken my own advice well um, actually you knew how to code before a lot well i did though, i right? did so i put a tweet out today you know weighing in on this this learn to code uh meme which we'll, we'll talk a little bit about where this came from uh basically said that i have worked in both uh both as a journalist and a comic book creator mm -hmm. and uh, i also know how to code and guess guess which one of those career paths uh pay better code <laughs> yeah right there's a reason why we're not really journalists all the time we're comic book creators anymore yeah um because it's 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 there those are not very secure those are not very secure industries so the meme that's going around the learn to code meme where it came from was uh a couple of years ago when coal miners were getting laid off from their jobs there was a big push to uh retrain these guys and girls uh i guess to, to learn how to code, to get with the times. And there was a lot of, um, I guess, smug satisfaction from uh, liberal journalists in places like New York that were like, oh, yeah. let's, let's, let's teach these uh, poor, uh, unfortunate Appalachian folk. And some of the headlines actually were kind of condescending. And that's right. what they were. And it was basically, it, honestly, what it was, was basically that the, the, the extreme leftists were like, well, we don't want coal and we don't want that kind of energy anymore anyway. So boo hoo hoo, sucks to be you, learn to code. It was basically the attitude. It was. Right, right. And there wasn't, I mean, I'm not saying that there there wasn't sympathy there. There wasn't, I mean, because, you know, frankly, you know, coal is, is, is living on borrowed time. But you know, it was just a very kind of flippant uh, right. response. So now that a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of uh, BuzzFeed and Huffington Post journalists have been laid off in the last couple of weeks. Twitter is telling them to learn to code because journalism is changing right. and they don't want to accept it. And it's being uh, viewed as targeted harassment by Twitter. Again, it's okay when they say it to you, but it's not okay when you say it to them. Right. So uh, you can kind of go through some of the examples here. Uh, you know, some of the, the journalists that got laid off are complaining. They're going through the replies and muting everyone tweeting, learn the code. And uh, this dude's like, think of all the code you could be learning instead of wasting time like that. Uh, Cassandra Fairbanks, they should learn to code talking about Buzzfeed. Uh, so this is coming from the ringer. What sounds like innocuous career advice is in many cases, part of a targeted harassment campaign. The phrase learn to code was added to know your meme four days ago, where it's described as an expression used to mock journalists who were laid off from their jobs, encouraging them to learn software development as an alternate yeah, career but path. they're not finishing it with the other half, which is because when other people got laid off from all these coal mines and stuff closing, they were telling everybody to go learn to code. Right. They're not including that part. It's an attack against them. Well, the reason people are saying it to them is because that's exactly what they told everybody else when they were getting laid off. Now, we don't want anybody to be laid off. I mean, no. it's a bad thing. We've been there. It sucks. We don't wish that on anyone. Um, but we have, we have stated many times repeatedly that do not rely on just one business or one thing that you're into. You need to make sure you have backup on backup. You need to be flexible. You have to be able to adjust. We'll go into that in a minute, but you want to talk about this first. Uh, yeah. So I, I guess what really kind of, what really kind of, uh, pushed it, pushed it into the mainstream, uh, consciousness was Tucker Carlson who said that uh, he actually took a few minutes and he did say he did say to be fair he, he said he had sympathy for people who lost their jobs no one i don't think anybody thinks people should have to lose their jobs unless you work in coal and stuff and they had no problem gloating about people losing their jobs then right and that's what he's trying to point out is there was a lot of you know uh people were were, were throwing it back in their faces because some of these journalists had actually written pieces on yes i remember you know kentucky coal miners learning the code and uh carlson said in a previous cycle of what uh, used to be called creative destruction journalists had readied advice for newly unemployed blue collar workers just learn the code like it's that easy you know they can just do that coding is the future stop whining and embrace right. it and there were several articles uh, we pulled some up from npr from coal to code the new path for laid off miners uh from wired can you teach a coal miner to code like they're like, dumb like they're and dumb. they can't yeah right if you give a mouse a cookie 
Okay, how many, how many coal miners does it, t- does it take to code? You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. It does come across, that's, 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 you know, it kind of... Can you teach a coal miner to code? Well, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, some of those guys are oh, actually God, uh, so bad. pretty damn smart. That's like, you know, uh, I know your family, you know, working in, in machine shops and stuff. Those yeah. guys are smart. My father is a, uh, it was a an engineer, like an engineer, like a mechanic that he worked on uh, aviation equipment. He used to be, he used to work um, at major airports on their aviation and stuff. He worked uh, locally. They had him doing all the inspections and everything else. I swear, my dad... He, he is he he's he's just so smart i can't even tell you anything is though if you talk to him he'll tell you he isn't smart like because he when it comes to like he, as he calls book learning he mm. might not spell everything correctly but he can you he fix him can be fixed he can fix it i mean yeah. he's brilliant so the whole idea especially since these guys these guys think this way the whole idea that they can't code is just stupid yeah there's a lot of yeah it's just really know, condescending and mad. well i think it, it comes from again it comes from the the uh college elite who think, mm-hmm. well, I've got a degree, I'm better than you are. I I deserve uh, a career in my chosen profession, but you, you know, blue collar bumpkins. But you know what makes me mad? Uh, don't. Because don't. there's gonna be a shortage of blue collar workers. There soon. is. There are people like that can do like electricians and all that. My father also worked as that and everything else. People who can do these things, who can fix your cars and everything. There's gonna be a shortage of these people. And you know what? They're gonna get paid better than you people with degrees are. They're already being paid better than people with degrees are. And it's like, so do not look down on your nose. I mean, that makes me so mad because I have a degree and I'm not, I would not say we're blue collar. However, my whole family, I have a whole bunch of family members, you have a bunch of family members mm-hmm. that work. And yeah. it's like, you know, don't look down on our family members. You know I mean? They're just as smart as you are. Well, don't look down your nose on them financially either, because I will tell you, kick your ass. <laughs> from, uh, from, from my own personal experience, uh, people who are driving truck are making more money than mm-hmm. a lot of people uh, who have a liberal arts degree working for someplace like Buzzfeed. Guys who go out and know how to fix the oil rigs, Oh my God, they're making six figures. Yes. So, you know, when you're looking down at blue collar uh, people, uh, I guarantee you they're making more money than a BuzzFeed journalist. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So I'm just saying. There are, you should see. Never look down anywhere. uh, There was one place I worked. uh, I worked in the marketing department for a a, uh, manufacturing company. And some of the guys that were working in um, gas and oil, I mean, these were kids. They were in their early 20s. Uh, they were joking how they were going out and buying like brand new sports cars and paying cash mm-hmm. for them because these kids were just completely flush with cash. Some of them were making close to two hundred thousand dollars. And they a didn't year. have student loans. No, you had to pay back because they went to technical schools or mm-hmm. they went to schools afterwards that were technical schools at a much, you know, much less expense, right. expensive school. Um, but they had they had skills, and that's what we're gonna get to. It's this is this idea of skills. You're not owed anything because you went to a college. You're not owed anything because you graduated from a, a prestigious art school. You're you're not owed. I mean, we've run into so many people from a certain oh, yeah. school. I'm not going to mention yep. who think that they are all that in a bag of chips, but their art is balls. So I'm just saying, you know, they're you're not owed anything just because you have a degree. Yeah, and that's that's really what the point of of this is. Uh, the point of all of this is that attitude. And it's not just it's not just with uh, journalists, with BuzzFeed journalists or Huffington Post journalists. It's also in comics and animation. Mm-hmm. There are so oh, many people. So many people working in comics and animation that think that they are owed a career Mm -hmm. because that's what they want to do. Even if the money's not there, they're owed this career. Right, and it's not their people. And we have gotten into, like, literally, like, it fights with people. You know, we've gotten into fights with people. Imagine that. You know, (laughs) no, not that that's unusual. Not that that's unusual, but we have gotten into fights with people in the comic book community because uh, there were some people who just, they were not marketable anymore. In the comic book industry, especially right now, it's it's collapsing. And the best advice I can give anybody is please, please, please have a backup career path because it's not going to be, it's not going to be in, in very good shape. The comic book industry is not going to get better. People with book deals have day jobs. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, if you have a day job, there's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing to be ashamed of for having a day job. I don't know why people think there is something to be ashamed of. And then I'm going to say it again. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again. People are like, well, so-and-so does it full time. Well, oftentimes if you look into so-and-so, it turns out, do they do it full time? Yes. What they're not telling you is they do it full time, but their spouse or their, their significant other uh, is a doctor yeah. or a nurse or a teacher or they have a job that pays the bills. So when they're doing it full time, it doesn't mean they're making money. It just means they're doing it full time. Because if you want to do this full time, 
uh, uh, that I recommend going and finding is somebody who, to hook up with that makes a lot of money. There are so many people at, working in comics and animation that there are, are yeah, with someone well, who is making most of the money. Again, that I mean, one writer who I'm not going to name, but it's a woman who and who told us about how you go to bars and 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 you make you make sure you're the one that gets a drink for so and so and hands it to them so you can use it you can sell you know use it to as an opportunity to get yourself a gig and it worked her husband was a doctor yeah i know right <laughs> it's like so don't believe everything you see but yeah the, the the truth is the best thing you can do for yourself and this this uh, you know includes uh youtubers too there are so many people who were maybe big on YouTube a couple of years ago and they're not big now and they don't really have any other job skills because a lot of YouTubers, you know, are younger. I think they just kind of start, you know, the only other thing they can do is like, you know, deliver pizzas or whatever. They don't have other job skills. Any kind of like creative industry, uh, you, especially journalism and comics and animation and YouTube, like those things ebb and flow, those career paths ebb and mm -hmm. flow. You're not going to be doing, chances are, you're not going to be doing that forever. It's going to be part of your career. You're going to either move on to something else or you're going to move out. You're going to move out into something entirely. And if you cling to that career path, you see these like washed up, uh, you know, celebrities at, at a lot of conventions and stuff that like they never, not saying all of them are. And I want no, to be clear because we actually, not. a lot of them did not, but there are a lot of people who are like, God, you know, they just never moved they never moved on right you have to be adaptable yeah you I have mean, that's to be the best adaptable. thing i can tell you is you have to be adaptable you pick up as many skills as you can i mean nothing is guaranteed you always need to be adaptable and that's one of the reason we we were able to be okay when things happened to us because we were adaptable and we had other skills like we both worked in many different mm -hmm. things so because of that we had many skills there's nothing wrong with working retail oh my no. gosh well, i have to hear more time i don't want to work retail you know what i've worked retail you've worked retail yeah retail sucks Working yeah, in a restaurant sucks. can suck. I'm not gonna lie, can suck. However, you do what you gotta do. And and you know, there's nothing wrong with why you're building up your comic, your animation, whatever, mm -hmm. your YouTube, whatever you're doing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with working a job in something that you don't like as much, you know, to, to make sure you pay your bills while you, you build up what you need to build up. Yeah, and you know what sucks worse than working retail is being homeless. Yeah. That you've sucks. You've been too. Uh yeah. So that's a whole nother that's a whole nother story when I was younger, yeah. Um but here's here's the thing. Like even when when we worked in comics and we we uh did our web comic, when I worked on licensed comics for actual publishers uh when we were pursuing a publishing deal um i always had a day job mm -hmm. there was always a day job and it, it you know thankfully did involve computer skills i picked up uh you know because that's how you know the bills got paid and and you know again you can you can go work at walmart or you know if you wouldn't i mean god you know how much programmers make they make pretty damn good money like mm -hmm. you're complaining about being told to learn a code, you're gonna make three times as much money doing that as you are as a BuzzFeed journalist. Right. You know, and you will be employable for the next umpteen, 20, 30 years. Right. Uh, you know, uh, co programming, coding is not going anywhere. There's gonna be a need for it. Journalism, as we know it now, is changing. Newspapers are closing down right. at an alarming rate. And websites are closing down mm -hmm. at an alarming rate because, you know, mostly, you know, people, you know, all the news outlets, and we did a whole video on this, or sort of uh, everything is centralizing. But beyond that, if people want alternative news, they're going to YouTube. They're going to independent right. bloggers. There's no reason why you can't take a day job as a web developer or a programmer and then come home at night and make YouTube videos with your opinions on the news. You know, what do you think we do? Right. And you know what makes me mad? <laughs> come yeah, no, on. we have a day job too. What makes me mad is this whole idea that, because by telling them to go code, because that's what they said to other people, yeah. Um, that's hate speech. How come it's hate speech now, but it wasn't hate speech when you told people to do that before? Right. And we live in the, in the areas that are coal mining jobs and their jobs are going away and it's a problem. And I mean, I personally, I'm for I'm for cleaner energy. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I, I, I understand how it affects people because I live in an area where it affects people. So I, I totally get it. Um, but I, I would never say to somebody who got laid off, well, go learn to code. You know, yeah. I mean... I, 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 and then, then when it happens to them, they, they're just like, how dare you? It's hate speech. I'm like, oh my God. It's, it's weird. It's kind of like, it reminds me of like, <sighs> there was just some smug sass, like, look, I helped people, but really I helped my own political opinions. Kind of like, you know, like the rich throwing, uh, ridiculous, uh, uh, gala events for, uh, homeless people yeah, or whatever. Yeah, they could have given the money. They could have just given them the money. To the homeless people. Right? Yeah, I know. Um, it's like, uh, you know, so it's it just this kind of this kind of fakey, let's put this the show on 
let's put a show on for how we uh, want to help these these poor folks. In reality, we're we're giggling with delight because Trump can't help these people. So that helps my opinion because Trump can't. Oh yeah, help these if, if anything shuts down, they're immediately all over yeah. that. Like, and I'm not even like, again. I'll say it again. Don't like Trump. Don't like him. Uh, I didn't vote for him. Don't like him. But I will say I, I've noticed the media anytime anything shuts down, it's immediately his fault. Even if you can trace it back that it wasn't his fault, yeah. it's immediately his fault. Flip side is he gets they, there's a lot of new sites on the other side that credit him with things, and if you track it back, it wasn't all him either. So I mean, he's either all he's responsible for everything, either bad or good. Somehow it's all his fault. So you know. Well, I want to I want to tie this into comics since we talk so much about comics and animation and uh, creative things on this channel. Um, I did pull this article up before, but we have a lot of new people since I talked about it. Rachel Neighbors, who is a webcomic artist. Oh, yeah, I remember um, She basically quit comics. She was an award-winning uh, webcomic artist. She actually did very well for herself uh, in that regard until she had a medical emergency. Uh, she had a medical emergency, and she realized she, she couldn't pay for it. It wasn't realistic to do comics anymore. So she learned to code. Literally, she learned to code. That's what she did. And um, she has this article out here, which I'll, I'll link in the description called uh, Don't Do What You Love. And a lot of people, I think, gave her in creative communities, gave her a lot of crap they for did, this. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's really good advice. Now, she has actually merged her. She does some animations here, um, which are actually actually pretty cool. So she has merged her creativity with her coding skills mm -hmm. now. And uh, but primarily she builds websites um, for people. But you can see, like, she's not giving up on on creating comics. She's just making things she differently. She used her new skills and evolved it into something that's more marketable and more modern. Right, which I think this is freaking awesome, actually. Uh, very cool. But she actually tells you at the end how she did it. Designing, coding, and uh, source files. And she tells you how to do it. Um, again, this is a, a great example of how, you know, she realized she wasn't making money doing comics. And she decided that she was going to, you know, uh, you know, do something to, to provide for herself. You right. Know? And um, she did a great job at it. Now she's being invited to speak at conferences right. and all kinds of stuff. Uh, but we see people out there on um, YouTube, you know, especially now that because, you know, YouTube is either demonetizing videos or, you know, they're not getting the hits they used to get for whatever reason. And I, I watched a video last night, you know, kind of, you know, along the same lines. Um, I think Easy Peasy put it out there. And he said that he was really tired of YouTubers that were constantly begging for money. Like he said he was watching videos where YouTubers would spend half of a 15 minute video uh, rattling off like 50 different ways to give them money. And he said it was really off putting because he's like, He's like, one, I'm subscribing to your channel because I want your content. He's like, now, if you put a link up to Patreon or to, you know, uh, some alternative to Patreon or something, he's like, that, that's fine. Like, everybody does that. But he's like, when it becomes like a telethon and you're constantly asking for money, it's like, clearly, uh, you know, you're not making enough money doing this. And he's like, nobody owes you a job making YouTube videos, mm -hmm. you know? And he's like, a lot of these people, they, they don't have any other job skills. Uh, but they don't want to go work retail. And we run into that with comic book people too. It's like, he's like, there's no shame in working a day job and coming home at night and doing videos. You know, he's like, if you turn it into a job, he's like, there's no, there's no guarantee YouTube is even going to be around in 10 or 20 years, right. you know? And, and the smart people, the smart people, you know, in regards to YouTube, they've, they've taken their YouTube fame and they've transitioned it into right. something else. You look at like the Brett and link and where they have a whole business model, you know, YouTube is the anchor, but they do other stuff. You know, or some of the people doing comics projects, they do YouTube, but they crowdfund their comics right. projects. You know, that's smarter than just let's get on YouTube and damn it, you're going to give me money and we're going to beg, 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 beg. Well, I, I, I've said it before. I talked about it before about these people that, you know, they are basically like, I don't have any job, you know, any job I'm jumping into. I have no reason to think I'm going to get a job and jumping into. I have no reason to think that if I move or if I quit my job, I'm going to be able to make it. A, I'm going to be make it in creative endeavors. And they actually quit their job and move. And then they're like, oh my God, I have a, a GoFundMe up. I, I am stuck here. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, my, I'm gonna be homeless. I came out here and, I, and then, you know, and then me telling them, I don't know if I would do that. I think I'd find a job first and then, you know, then move. You're just being negative. Why are you telling them that? You sound like that? my mother. You're tell, why are you <laughs> telling them that? You need to support them and be encouraging and you're being negative. And then they end up in trouble. And I'm thinking of one person particularly and I totally got told I was being negative. And then they were, they were completely in trouble. And you know what? They ended up working retail anyway. 
Yeah, and, and then they wound up in a more expensive area that they couldn't yeah. possibly afford. I think they, up, they were moving back where they were from right. because they couldn't do it. And and the thing that, that gets me about this is people look at this as like, you're trying to kill my dream. You know, like when we give people advice on creative careers, it's like, look, we're giving you advice because we've actually done it. Mm -hmm. We've we actually- don't wish this stuff on anyone. <laughs> we've sometimes. actually done this. This is not like your, your parents maybe who uh, don't know anybody that works in the arts. They don't know anybody that works in comic books. They don't know anybody that works in animation. And they're just like, it's a pipe dream. Don't do it. Go be a dentist. I was going to say, go be a dentist too. Yeah. Actually, dentists make incredibly good money. So you have a choice, be a dentist. And they work like 30 hours yes, a week. Yes, so you have plenty of time so. for your comics also. Yeah, right? So go be a dentist and then do your comics on the side. You have enough money to fund your projects and you'll have all the hours to do it. Yeah. Um, win win. But, you know, we tell people this because we, we've been there. We're not trying to kill dreams. I, I totally absolutely uh believe in chasing your dreams but 100%. i but i believe in being practical mm -hmm. about getting there like you know you want to achieve the dream that's great to have that dream how are you going to do it if you can't answer the how mm -hmm. then you're never going to do it yeah and what we're trying to say is you know we're not telling you not to do it by all means no what we're telling do it definitely do it we're all about that but we're telling you, be smart in how you do it. And honestly, if you just go jumping into it without a plan, you actually might set yourself back two or three years. Where yeah, it might take you a little bit longer if you're doing it with a plan, and maybe it might take you a year or two longer. But by jumping into something and like, totally screwing yourself up, and then you have to walk away from it, and then you're like, oh my god, I'm in survival mode. You might set yourself back like five years. Where if you just you know stuck with a plan, maybe it was a more of a turtle's pace in the race, you mm. would have got further. Yeah, because there's so many people that yeah, they jump into it, they wind up with a whole bunch of debt because they're like living on credit, uh, trying to chase something. Um, they wind up, uh, you know, in, in just a worse, worse condition because it's really hard. I mean, honestly, look, it's really hard to be creative when you are worried about the lights getting shut off every other day because you're not making enough money to pay your bills, your mm -hmm. basic living expenses. You can't be creative when you're starving, when you're going to have your car repoed, when you are got credit card companies calling you. Uh, every freaking day. It's really hard to be creative, and especially in like comics where sometimes you don't get paid for like yes. 45 or 90 People days. People don't realize that. With comics, oftentimes you send the bill in and you don't get paid. They have like a, a usually like a 90 day window they can pay you in. Yeah. You might wait three months to get paid. Yeah, um, they, yeah, people don't understand that. They don't understand that. They, they think, and again, this is just, you know, due diligence. Um, but, you know, I guess the point of all this is whether it's it's journalists or comics creators who are you know uh being displaced or coal miners or coal or miners it is not cruel there's nothing cruel in suggesting that they they do something more marketable um you know to survive what is cruel is to tell them to keep uh you know uh doing things as they've been doing them and that magic is going to happen and that uh, you know, eventually they'll they'll be able to just you know keep keep on keeping on the way they've been. That it hasn't been working. Uh, Buzzfeed is never coming back. Huffington Post is never going to hire them again. Probably uh, most of these uh, you know uh, news outlets are are declining in value. Gizmodo, they're trying to unload Gizmodo. These kinds of sites, they're not going to make a comeback. If you want to blog, by all means, go start a blog. But you know what? If you want to start a blog, you're going to have to learn how to code. Yeah, it's true. So, um, those are those are our thoughts on the the co coding, yeah. the coding, the coda on the coding situation. And I don't think this is. I think this is. You know, they're getting on that. Oh, it's targeted harassment. Targeted karma. harassment. It's flipping karma. Is well, what it is. It is. It is it's karma. karma. And it's like, yeah, people are saying it now. People are saying it to you now because you, there was no sympathy when it was them, and that's what your first go to was. Well, learn to code. I'm like, oh my god, can I remember that? And it was like, I was like, why did I tell people? I mean, I totally agree with retraining programs, mm. but I was just like, what the heck? That's so not nice. And now, you know, but now the shoe's on the other foot. Well, that's, you know? that's exactly it. That's exactly it. It's basically, you know, it's, it's, uh, what is good for the goose is not good for the gander. Mm -hmm. And they have been doling out, uh, unsolicited advice for years. Now they have to take that advice themselves. And, uh, yeah, the real world's tough. I know that you just, you know, you, you, uh, got a job at Buzzfeed probably right out of college and that's all you've ever done. Uh, but things change. Just like you told, uh, those coal miners, things change comic book yeah. industry. The comic book industry is shrinking. Uh, you know, if, if all you've done are comic books, things change. Well, some of those coal miners probably have more years in these people at BuzzFeed. And they're yeah. just, and then that's all they knew. They were trained to be, that's what they were trained for. 20, 30 years. Yeah. That's all they did. Yeah. And so my, my best advice to anyone is anytime you have a chance to pick up a new skill, there's mm -hmm. like a little like class at the library or class somewhere you can just pick up, you know, that you can take and get a new skill. 
if you can do it, do it. It might not help you now, it might help you 10 years from now. If there's anything you can do to pick up, pick it up because you never know what life's gonna throw at you and, and the more um, adaptable you are, the better off you're going to be. I mean, do I think that some people have gone overboard? Yeah. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably. I can't blame them. But no. realistically, there's nothing cruel in, in suggesting to people who cannot provide for themselves, maybe you need to find another way. There's nothing cruel about that at all. And um, I think realistically, you know, these journalists are gonna have to realize that, you know, they're, they're not gonna go work for BuzzFeed again. It's, it's over. That part of their life is over. Some of them might still be able to find other jobs in journalism, but um, other yeah. ones, no. No. And, you know, and a lot of people have been in this situation before, and other, other, even in journalism or other jobs, and they just had to, you know, find something new, either a new career or uh, start their own thing yeah. or whatever. But just be smart about it. Be smart about it. And, uh, you know, if you don't like the advice, then just stay off Twitter. I guess I don't <laughs> that's what you tell other people. Stay off Twitter. You don't like I guess it's not say. for you. Um, but uh, yeah, so I would uh, encourage you guys to uh, all take up coding. It does pay fairly well. Um, <laughs> it's always can. helpful if you want to do your own thing. It's always helpful if you want to do your own thing. But I guess we're going to wrap this one up. Um, this has been uh, Neon and Geeky for Clownfish TV. Bye. Goodbye. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.